welcome to the Prescription Studios. Right now we're about to walk into Studio A. This is the control room. Got some great monitors, beautiful velvet walls. I don't know what to say in here, but this is where some of the magic is made. And through that window is our, one of our vocal booths. Telefunken 251, pretty awesome. I was living in Nashville and I was making trips out to LA quite a bit, writing trips. And when I was out here and collaborating with all of the different people, I just really felt a sense of limitlessness as far as genre goes. And I felt that any room I could walk into, I could do pop, hip hop, some weird blend of all the things and I just loved it. But the thing for me that convinced me for me specifically that I needed to be out there because I do believe you can make great music in any city. But I kept just having these magical experiences of bumping into different creatives in the studio. So I'd go make coffee and I'd run into an amazing artist or producer. So when I realized I was getting places just by being in the right place at the right time, that for me convinced me that I needed to make the full-time move. So I moved in the middle of COVID, which was crazy, but it ended up working out so great and I just love it. I did notice a phenomenon, which I can't blame people for, of me going into the studio, them seeing me, thinking I was the artist, and being just absolutely shocked when I would play the beats or be having the role of commanding the session. I'm the producer, I'm the engineer. So my first experience was, wow, people aren't expecting this from me. And like the first five sessions, I was, it kind of put me off a little bit. And then after a while, I was like, no, this is really cool. I get to be the person who shows them a person like me is doing this. The one thing that I did feel was challenging was there was a lot of comments literally up until these two big cuts that I've gotten of, maybe we should send your beats out and you should have a cartoon persona. Maybe we should keep your identity completely anonymous. There was a lot of concern over my name being too feminine or too girly or too this. The amount of overthinking of how I would present myself in the studio to be taken seriously, mainly by business people, because to be honest, to creative, I never had a problem. And I'm honestly honored to get to be one of the first females in this role at a high level. It's really cool. It still doesn't feel real. The fact that they both dropped on the same day was very insane to me. These are artists that I've literally dreamt of working with for so long. And both of them happened within a one month time frame, which is really fast in the music industry for those songs to get recorded and come out that fast. So that was magical, but I still can't believe it's real. Like I'll be driving in the car and they'll come on the radio and I'm like, whoa, I made that. That's so wild. So it's been a huge blessing. I'm still honestly trying to absorb it and integrate the fact that this is reality and not just a fever dream I'm in. When we all got together, the purpose of it, you know, was to make something incredible. We had the idea to flip that sample and there was definitely a weight that came with that sample because every time it's been used, it's been a huge hit. So we spent about the first 20, 30 minutes, like how do we honor this track and how do we pay homage to it, but also make it fresh in 2022, bad bitch energy. So, we started working on it and very quickly it just became so fun and we were just all tossing back, doing different parts. It was very collaborative, very creative. And at the end of it, I think we all knew we had done something special. And, you know, there's comments in the room of, well, if this one doesn't work, I don't know what would work and all of that. And I remember taking pictures on my iPhone because I had a feeling that it would be special. But, you know, we do that all the time and sometimes it doesn't happen. But that day in particular, I just remember I had actually been really down in the dumps and discouraged. And that session like brought me back to life. And I had so much fun that I was like, this is why I do music. So partially why it was so cool that it has become a number one hit was this personal significance that day had to me. Do you wanna see the vocal booth? It's really cool. Check it out, nice big vocal booth. You sit here, you can just imagine now, put on the headphones, sing your heart out. Love this room. Whenever I make something that is for my solo project, I know instantly it's a 
certain vibe that I it's probably very like esoteric but it's just me so those tracks I absolutely save for myself there's certain ideas that I've had in a note on my phone for a year or two years that I know will be on this album or this album so I definitely safeguard those I think they're really special when you find things that are really authentic to you and honestly, when I create for other artists, I go into it with that intention. So I'll try to channel their energy or their essence or, you know, what they want to talk about. And I'll make something new for them. But for me, I absolutely there have been times when I've gone into something for someone else. And I'm like, this sounds like a Malibu baby track. So I'm starting to kind of like bookmark those ones. But I do try to go into everything with an intention for sure. I love it because I, you know, I produce and I write and I sing. And so we're doing monthly releases literally until the end of time. I have two new projects dropping next year, all sorts of stuff. And then as far as producer career, I'm really wanting to work with people that I believe in and am passionate about. And I believe that they can coexist. I think this summer has been a great example of that. Even I played my first debut show, which was LA Pride, like a 25,000 person festival. Then within a month, you know, Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion are cutting productions that I did. I only did like probably eight sessions in the month of June because I was doing so much rehearsal for Pride and in the dance studio. And two of those songs happened to get cut and be hits. So that's been pretty fun. So I'm hoping to keep everything harmonious and going. But at the end of the day, I am an artist first. So that's going to take precedence. I would love for a female producer to win a Grammy. That has never happened. Billboard, if you're watching, Billboard Women of the Year, they don't have a producer category, I think because females are few and far between. I think that would be awesome to be getting an award there. I'd love to set a record for a female producer with the most number ones. But most important, honestly, is just making music that impacts culture in a positive way. Like, bottom line, take away the awards, that's why I got into it. Mm -hmm.